you know what would be neat, Steve, if you could beam yourself up here for a weekend and we could just uh, uh, become uh, the perpetual Uber geek. <laughs> About 10 years ago, I was playing with some beads in my loft when I accidentally discovered this weird chain fountain phenomenon, also known as the mold effect. No big deal. And unbelievably, an astronaut just video called me from space so that we could figure out together whether this one little detail about my explanation of the chain fountain is correct, because this one little detail can only be tested in zero G. And along the way, we discovered that chain behaves a lot more weirdly than either of us had predicted. More on how all this came about later, but first, what is this thing that we were testing? Well, my explanation of the chain fountain is generally considered to be correct following a six video argument with Mehdi from Electroboom. Hmm. He was right. But one part of my explanation had to kind of just be accepted as true without really testing it because well, it can't be tested properly in gravity. Now this might make me sound like a sole winner, but I really just wanted to prove this last little bit experimentally. And anyway, assuming it is right, I just knew that it would look insanely cool in space. But what is this crucial part of the explanation that we're all just accepting? Well, in the absence of gravity, like on the ISS, if you were to release some chain, it should just float there in whatever random shape it was given. But what if you were to tug on one end of the chain? Would it flatten out or would it hold its shape and flow like this? We need it to hold its shape for my explanation of the chain fountain to be right, but why? Well, look, I can highly recommend a series of videos by me and Mehdi if you want the full explanation, link in the card in the description for that. But in short, the chain rises above the pot in a fountain because of an extra upward force coming from the pot. How strong does that force need to be though? Well, it needs to be able to overcome the weight of this arc of chain that would obviously fall under gravity. And that's it, that's all you need. But you might look at this system and think, well, no, the extra upward force from the pot needs to be much greater than that because look, the chain is being yanked downwards by this large bit of chain down here. But that's the crazy thing. According to the maths, that yanking of the chain has no influence on the arc at all. If gravity wasn't a factor, the arc would be fixed there in space even though it was being yanked downwards at one end. Or at least that's the theory, that's what we want to test. We want to test the theory that a chain moving at constant speed will flow through its own shape so long as it isn't acted on by an external force like gravity. What I really wanted to test was this. You've got a chain floating stationary in space and you tug on one end, let's see what happens. But it turns out it's impossible to get a chain to be stationary in space. I actually think that setup wouldn't have been fruitful anyway because the behavior that we're looking for only works in steady state, not while the chain is speeding up. And the whole chain would have had to speed up from zero movement in this setup anyway. A side note on how chaotic the movement of the chain is, Don likened it to the movement of molecules. We tend to model these like slowly moving blobs, but there's a lot of energy down there. And just like in zero G, there's nowhere for the energy to go. So the molecules sort of wiggle and writhe about just like the chain here. Anyway, my other idea to test the theory was to hold the chain in something analogous to a pot. In other words, just have it all bunched up somewhere and then pull one end of the chain out of that bunched up mess at a constant speed. And as you're pulling it, if you give it a shape, then it should hold that shape in space as it's leaving the pot. It should just add into what you've already created without that shape changing. The problem with that is it's basically impossible to pull something at a constant speed and the clumped up beads just get tangled and they start to float apart. And by the way, we only had 25 minutes for the call because a satellite was gonna go out of view. Actually, a bit of a tangent about the tech behind the video call. I put some Skype sounds in at the start of this video because I thought it was funny, but of course you can't use Skype to talk to someone in space because, I mean, you need to think about satellites and how are you going to communicate? It was Microsoft Teams. It was a Teams call. And like, there was basically no lag. I don't understand how they did it. But anyway, I had one more idea for how to test the theory. What if we turn the chain into a loop and then put the loop into a non-circular shape like a rectangle? My idea was to then grab the opposite sides 
of the rectangle and then like pull them like that so that you're not throwing the chain anywhere you're just giving the chain motion like around the loop of chain intuitively you would expect it to pop out into a circle but if my theory is right then it should hold that rectangular shape third hand we're making a triangle and we're going to release it okay. together one two three 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 <laughs> It's, it's really... <laughs> it's impossible. But obviously we couldn't actually get the chain to form that shape and hold that shape without anyone touching it because chain just doesn't do what you want it to do in zero gravity. On Earth, it's so easy to get something to stop moving. You just put it down. Uh, and you, when you took your hand away from the bead chain, there was just so much energy in there yes. already. Just, just, it, it just kind of spreads out but we just needed to get some non-circular shape and we needed to get the chain flowing. Yeah. Hey, hey, look at that. It, it's almost a circle now. That's very cool, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Which is actually, interestingly, not what I expected because I, I was expecting it not to pop out into a circle. But look at that. It, it started the, it's still rotating and, and I think the radial acceleration is going to straighten this thing out. Let's just keep it going. You've done you've done stuff with like a, a a drop of water and a bubble and things yeah. like that, haven't you? Where it you've got this you've got this t surface tension that's turning it into a a sphere or a circle. You don't have that here, so I don't think it ever will turn into a circle. That's the thing that is hopefully going to demonstrate this weird thing about chains. How cool is that though? It does seem to be holding its shape. Look, even from this angle, you can see part of the chain was actually bent out towards Don, and that part of the chain shape is holding too. But Don has a point actually. The chain does seem to be very slowly turning into a circle, or at least it's becoming more rounded. So does that mean I'm wrong? Well, the mathematical analysis assumes that there is no friction between the joints of the chain. And I had a suspicion that that might be why the real chain is slowly becoming circular. So I asked my friend Martin Bayer to simulate different scenarios for me. Here, there's no friction between the joints. But look what happens when we turn friction on. Over time, the chain becomes more and more circular. So I think it's fair to say that the chain is behaving how we would expect. Actually, we discovered a few other really interesting things on the call. You are so right. This behaves totally different than a string uh, it, uh, because of the, yeah. the lack of friction at every joint. And, and thread for sewing, it sticks out fairly straight. It's inherent yeah. stiffness shows up. But here with these low friction joints between every segment, it's amazing what this thing does. It's so interesting, isn't it, how many things behave completely differently when you remove gravity. I had no idea that rope and string would just straighten out yeah. because of the elasticity in it. Yeah. So you've got an intuition for how string and rope behaves on the ISS, yeah. and then the chain doesn't behave like that. You see, I could actually steer the string around by torquing on the yo-yo, but a beaded chain has a mind of its own. It responds to air current. Yeah. It responds to gravity gradient. If you don't have air currents, it'll end up stretching out in the, the direction of the gravity gradient if you leave it alone. No. It's really quite amazing. It doesn't work the way we thought it was going to work, but then uh, that's what it's like when you're doing a discovery. So this is around the world. And then this is the tether of cyst. So when you are in weightlessness, you get to make up your own yo-yo trick names. And then let's see if I can make it come better. There we go. Prior to the call, Don was experimenting with static charge, which meant we could loosely hold one end of the chain in place. Whoa! Whoa! <laughs> see? It's... You, you oh, can, that's crazy. Yeah. And, and I have video of this with a nice black background circular way pulled off the end and notice now with one free end it's really tough to control it send a wave now each bead here is about three millimeters i put a string of french clips together and these these are 50 millimeter links 
And I just want to show you that this behaves just like the beaded chain, but the leg scale yeah. is three millimeters to 50 millimeters. You might be wondering how all this came about, by the way. Well, after I made that video in my loft, I've been milking it ever since. In fact, you could argue that my entire career is built on a flailing chain of beads. Like at one point I held the world record for the tallest chain fountain, but eventually it was taken by a TV show in China until I took it back. Three, two, one. What the hell happened there? And I guess at some point a three-story high sculpture was erected in Guatemala. And of course I got into a real public feud with that scoundrel electro boom about it. And it was during that video argument that I mentioned the behavior that we've been looking for here. So in that video, I asked if anyone knows how to get the attention of someone on the International Space Station, let me know. Well, Stefan Ennis from the European Space Agency got in touch. Thanks, Stefan. And eventually, Samantha Cristoforetti climbed aboard a rocket with four meters of bead chain in her pocket. Unfortunately, she was quite busy, what with being the commander of that mission, so she didn't really have an awful lot of time to be fiddling about with beads. But she got the chain up there, and that's an important first step. And brilliantly, she put me in touch with another astronaut, Don Pettit. Now, the great thing about Don is you can nerd snipe him. Oh, look at that. Look at that. I mean, there's a lot of great things about Don, but anyway, I explained about the bead chain currently languishing on the International Space Station, and he really got into it, and he said he'd look for the beads next time he was up there. And then at some point we were emailing about the experiments, and he said, you know, look, it's hard to really communicate over email. Let's have a video call. And I was like, yes, that would be amazing. Just uh, like on a personal note, this was a, a, obviously a once in a lifetime experience, just unbelievable. There was a period as a kid where I wanted to be an astronaut, but the job that I ended up having, which is making science videos on YouTube, somehow means that I ended up having a video call with one. And like, uh, we were doing science together. Science that had never uh, been done before, you know? It just, I, I almost can't believe it happened. But yeah, beads in space. I think I peaked, literally. A huge thank you to Issa and Samantha and Don and NASA for making it happen. An extra big thank you to John Stevens, the person on the ground at NASA who put the video call together, made sure that all worked because Honestly, like I was pretty nervous about it because we only had one shot. It was 25 minutes and uh, my internet at home was terrible. So I had to, you know, set up somewhere else that had good internet. Um, and John just made it all really smooth, put my mind at ease. The full conversation unedited, plus Don's extra footage that he filmed for me outside of the video call, unedited, is available over on my Patreon. Link in the description for that. Oh, also thank you to Rohan Francis from Medlife Crisis because he was all over this, even before I got in touch with Issa. Look at him go. So there you go, that's the evidence that we have from space. What do you think? Does it prove that a chain will flow through a fixed shape in the absence of gravity? Does it change your opinion of my explanation of the chain fountain? It was a great demonstration seeing it pass through the same path through the loop and your explanation about why it would eventually turn into a full circle due to friction was pretty adequate. So I guess I agree with everything you said in your video and don't have to embarrass myself making another debunk video. Although you didn't quite demonstrate if the path will remain the same if the chain wasn't in a loop. Another simulation might be nice, but what would be better is to take 100 meters of chain into space and drag it behind you in a spacewalk. Do it! We just got the rug pulled out from under us, Steve. It's, that's been so interesting, so interesting to see it. Yeah, it is. And, and it was been really good actually talking to you so I could understand, uh, you know, yeah. what we want to look for. It looks like uh, we're just going to walk off the end of our KU band and then I'm going to have to okay. vacate right. because. I think that's it. 
Okay. Wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs>